Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Today we have invited the celebrity in the crypto market. He is the one and only Brock, Brock Pierce. And he is currently a world-renowned philanthropist and the chairman of the Bitcoin Foundation. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> so you are a world-renowned superstar in the crypto world. However, the Korean audience might not be familiar with who you are and what you did, what you've achieved. So could you briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I'm Brock. Um, <laughs> Uh, and we're in Seoul. <laughs> Korea's got Seoul. Um, uh, I've been coming here a long time. I used to live here mm -hmm. in, uh, in Seoul. I lived in uh, Pyeongchang Dong. Mm -hmm. I had started uh, the biggest uh, game currency, game item trading businesses in the West, mm -hmm. in Europe and North America. Um, Korea was always Mecca for <laughs> online games. Yeah, so it's for games, right? Yeah, well, it's because Korea. Uh, was the first market to really get broadband penetration, mm -hmm. real like proliferation of broadband. And as a result of it, it was one of the first markets to get virtual communities mm -hmm. and big online communities known as online games. Mm -hmm. And so Korea was the mecca of the online games business. I and remember when I was 13, I used to uh, get my pocket money from my mom and used to walk through websites and try to buy game money, you know, so that I could like buy like this good unique items on the pl on the platform. Yeah, and so that was this was the m most important market in the world and so <laughs> I naturally needed to learn it and so I came over here in 2004 and eventually acquired uh, Itemania and Item Bay, the two largest game currency and game item trading platforms. Mm -hmm. And so I had those businesses for 10 years. I think we had a team of about 700 people here mm -hmm. and we were doing over a billion dollars a year in South Korea alone, just in game currency sales mm -hmm. and game item sales. So you And so I've been doing this exact <laughs> business over here for a long time. So it would, I mean, you could be referred to as like the founder in the whole gaming trading community in Korea as well. Well, I wasn't the founder. Uh, uh, Jung Hoon Lee mm -hmm. and Thomas Kim were the founders. <laughs> I acquired their businesses, and so they were the CEOs and I was the chairman. But I've been, uh, I'd say, very active in the Korean market for a long time. So you are a very religious follower of the EOS project. And one title you have is the founder of EOS. I'm definitely not the founder. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm, 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 yes, uh, so, religiously uh, a fan. <laughs> so about the project, once you made the decision to start investing, what caught your eye? Well, um, it, Block One, the company that makes EOS, uh, it, the CEO there is Brendan Bloomer. Mm -hmm. uh, I acquired Brendan's game company. <laughs> he was selling game characters. I bought his business when he was 18 and moved him to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, a number of people that worked out of my Hong Kong office doing game item and game <laughs> account trading uh, are the, uh, the team that uh, runs Block One. So you had previous connections to the EOS project before it was released to the public? Yeah, so I mean, uh, uh, Brendan, who's the CEO, mm -hmm. has been, you know, worked with me his entire adult life. <laughs> um, Dan Larimer, who is the main developer, had started BitShares and then started Steemit. Mm -hmm. And then EOS is his third generation. He's the you know, probably the best programmer in the world today. <laughs> we hope to host him sometime in our interview. <laughs> so EOS is well known for its DAX system, Decentralized Autonomous Community. So do you believe that the DAX system of EOS will resolve the issue of mining the, how would you say it, the consensus algorithm issues constantly coming up in the blockchain world? Well, it's another approach, mm -hmm. and Dan Larimer coined the term mm -hmm. DAC, mm -hmm. like he literally is the person that coined <laughs> that term. And um, you know, Dan has done a phenomenal job. His first blockchain with BitShares is one of the most used blockchains in the world. Mm -hmm. Steemit, his second blockchain, is the most used blockchain in the world. Mm -hmm. And so between EOS, uh, Steemit, and BitShares, I think Dan's blockchains have about 75% global market share. <laughs> Most people don't look at those numbers in terms of transaction volume. They look at the value of the tokens. They don't yes. look at the use of the system. You know, you, it's good to follow the fundamentals, <laughs> actually look at the use uh, of it. Uh, I think that it's definitely the most important project to be following right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I'm chain agnostic. 
Uh, I believe that if anyone builds something that makes the world a better place, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, call it religious almost fanaticism in the market today where people are like, my blockchain is better than your blockchain. Of course, yes. You know, this is a, an open source movement, hopefully largely focused on making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to work on open source systems, we should keep open minds and open hearts. So once the BP voting is over, you think the community will grow to benefit the whole blockchain community of cryptocurrency industry? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing that's most fascinating about EOS um, is in part its governance structure. Instead mm -hmm. of having miners, it has block producers, but they're effectively the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and rather than using graphics cards or ASICs, they're using real infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. Real storage, real bandwidth, all of the things that you would need to build, call it consumer dApps, mm -hmm. consumer applications on the blockchain. And that's what Dan Larimer did with Steemit. Um, and the big difference is, if you wanna build consumer applications, like if you wanted to build Facebook, Mm -hmm. on the blockchain, it has to be frictionless, which means it has to be fee-less for consumers. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if every time you went to Amazon or every time you played a game, you had to pay a fee for every single action, that's a level of friction that will never make it usable to the average person. Mm -hmm. um, and Dan proved that, I think, very well with Steemit. So among the projects based on the EOS, uh, are there any prominent projects or special ones that, you, that caught your eye and you're looking into? Um, yeah, so I, I have a gaming background, mm -hmm. and so uh, I've been approached for years and years with people saying, oh, well, since you did all the game currency stuff, you're the godfather of that business, mm -hmm. how is the blockchain going to impact it? And uh, there hadn't really been uh, the great use cases yet, because mm -hmm. game economies, items don't really move from game to game effectively, um, and you can't build a game on any of the historical blockchains that can scale and uh, is frictionless, mm -hmm. uh, you can do that now with EOS. So I'm, I'm excited for the first time to actually take an interest now in building games on blockchains. Um, but again, it's consumer applications. Like I don't view EOS as an Ethereum competitor at all. They're, they're trying to solve different problems. Uh, it's really going to be the consumer applications. Think Steam. Mm -hmm. Think Steam it. You know, and now we can build Facebook mm -hmm. on EOS. <laughs> So, and, and, and you could build Facebook on EOS where you control all your data mm -hmm. and you get all the benefits of the sale of that data. You know, uh, uh, the, the, it, it, the disintermediation of marketplaces in a way where it, the power is given back to the people is going to be a, a cool thing to watch. So judging by the CryptoKitty pin on your hat, I am pretty sure that you're an avid follower of the gaming industry in the blockchain world. Yeah, it, it, it just it hadn't been ready yet. Mm -hmm. You couldn't build great games on, on the blockchain. Now, now I think you can. I think, I think that the time for that is now. So you are an avid follower of the Puerto Rico Investment Project. So can you explain a little bit about what you do there and your plans for Puerto Rico? Well, you, you eventually, well, you can if you choose. Mm -hmm. You move away from the idea of doing things just to benefit yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, and you start trying to figure out, hey, I've got limited time on this planet. How can I make a positive impact? How can I leave the world better than I found it? Mm -hmm. um, and so I can go build things anywhere. But I try to be very thoughtful in where I do it versus going where I want to be for the things that I like most. I'm optimizing for positive impact. Puerto Rico is one of those places where I can do the work that I do and I think benefit the lives of many others at the same time. And uh, that's why I'm there. So once rebuilding of Puerto Rico finishes, how would it look like? I mean, in your perspective. Well, I mean, uh, uh, look at Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, California has been a huge beneficiary of innovation. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the greatest innovations happening in the United States have historically happened in California. And that is why California is such a nice, nice place to live. <laughs> of uh, course, of course. Uh, we're bringing innovation to Puerto Rico. We're bringing tools to Puerto Rico so that young Puerto Rican students that have a dream, a vision mm -hmm. of what they want to do to make the world a better place, mm -hmm. you know, the business they want to build, we're bringing the tools there so that those dreams can become a reality. You know, Try and find uh, Puerto Rican entrepreneurs that have raised venture capital. Well, 
There's no yeah. venture capital. Yes, there. of course. Where are the angel investors? Where mm. are the mentors? Where are the advisors? Where are, you know, it, it hasn't historically had, you know, great innovation. Mm -hmm. You know, we're bringing the intellectual capital, the human capital, and the financial capital there, the tools needed so that Puerto Rican college students, you know, as they graduate or drop out, <laughs> mm -hmm. don't have to leave the island mm -hmm. to go build great things, to see their dreams become a reality. They will be able to do that there in Puerto Rico. I mean, if you go look anywhere in the world, why is Seoul the way that it is? It's because you had broadband early on. Yes, you yes. Know, there's every one of these major cities around the world had something special that happened. Some, some type of technological advancement that gave them tools that the rest of the world didn't have. And those tools gave them the opportunity to grill these, build these amazing cities that they've become. And you Puerto Rico is going to have those tools now. And you believe that this tool, the vessel that you see is cryptocurrency? Well, it's intellectual capital, human capital, and financial capital. And it's not limited to just cryptocurrency and blockchain. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the people with the means. It's the people with the knowledge and the resources. And the time <laughs> to, to, to make big things. Although it started as a very philanthropical movement, uh, claims that investors of Puerto Rico are moving there with the intention of dodging taxes. Would you care to comment on that? Um, yeah, I, I mean, what do governments do all over around the world? Governments are in the business of creating incentives. Mm -hmm. And they create incentives to stimulate markets. Um, Every government does this. This is the main tool that every government uses. You know, they all figure out ways to create incentives. It's the concept of gamification. Mm -hmm. What are you incenting for? And Puerto Rico has created incentives to bring intellectual capital to Puerto Rico, to bring human capital to Puerto Rico, to bring financial capital to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. That is the intention. It was designed to do just that. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it's... Good job, Puerto Rico. It's working. <laughs> They're getting exactly what they wanted. Mm -hmm. I mean, I... this is what every government around the world does. You know, they sometimes create tax incentives so that people burn more coal. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's a good incentive that serves anyone, doesn't serve humanity. Mm -hmm. But we create all sorts of incentives. I mean, the movie business gets a ton of it. Mm -hmm. You know, can all the all the movies are being filmed in Canada and filmed in Puerto Rico now, and like <laughs> places like this because they've created incentives so that the movie people say, I want to make my movie there. You know, we create incentives to bring solar power to places. Mm -hmm. You know, these are, these are good things. I hope one day to visit Puerto Rico once it finishes. We'd love to host you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this is not a, a, a simple project. Trying to make... Um, You're basically trying to build a city, like well, rebuild a city right Trying now. to give three million people uh, a better life. Trying wow. to give them the tools so that they can make their lives better. Mm -hmm. uh, and that takes a long time, <laughs> uh, it, 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 a lifetime probably. <laughs> so one title you have is the chairman of the Bitcoin Foundation. And the problem rising with Bitcoin is polarization of its wealth. Although it aims to achieve P2P system with no central authority, the distribution of this currency has yet to form a complete decentralization. Uh, and this causes for possibility of well investors causing price manipulations. Do you agree on that? Or if, as the chairman of the Bitcoin Foundation, how would you tackle this issue? Oh, I mean, financial markets are always gamed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the stock market's rigged. <laughs> um, uh, clearly, there are going to be the same people that rig the stock market or the same people that are going to try and manipulate the crypto markets, and mm -hmm. they do. Uh, but that's the natural way of things. It's the natural way of things. Uh, it's an open system. <laughs> And so, yeah, you have a lot of the smartest hedge fund managers in mm -hmm. New York and London and Hong Kong mm -hmm. all trading their Bitcoins now. <laughs> and uh, it's unfortunately looking more and more like the old system. But uh, <laughs> it's it meant to be inclusive of everyone. So they're welcome to it. Well, compared to the old system, do you still believe that Bitcoin is still the replaceable trading system? Well, I think Bitcoin... Uh, looks most like digital gold. Mm. It's like gold 2.0. Mm -hmm. It's not a good currency uh, today. It could be, but it's too volatile. Mm -hmm. It's more like a store of value. I mean, for 5,000 years, the primary form of money in the world was precious metals, gold, silver, and copper. Yes. The financial system of the world today is a 50-year-old experiment. Most people don't realize how new money is. Mm -hmm. Money has only been around for 50 years, the mm -hmm. kind of money that we use today. Really? Well, it was all gold before. 
Oh, really? Until the 1970s. I mean, I didn't really know that. Well, because the paper looks the same. <laughs> it just it used to be backed by gold. <laughs> now it's backed by nothing. So throughout your career, you've also been a well inventor. Maybe you have a lot of titles. But as an inventor, what do you seek in a project? Um, my, my focus is positive impact. You know, what are you optimized for? What are the key performance indicators or the KPIs? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm looking for good people trying to do good things. You know, uh, for example, uh, the Switch team is here. Um, they're trying to build solar arrays in the DMZ to provide power or energy to South Korea, but eventually North Korea. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And these are wonderful entrepreneurs that have the intellectual and human capital to make it happen. And so what I try to do is provide the financial capital to mm -hmm. enable you know, that dream to become reality. So, so that's what I spend my time. I try to find great people trying to do great things to hopefully build a better world because so we need it. Social impact is your main focus. When it's all social it's like impact. It's the determining point of your investment. Yeah, I, m money, I, money doesn't interest me much anymore. <laughs> so you're taking part as one of the keynote speakers of our Blockchain Open Forum. So what's your take on the event so far? Again, this is Korea's leading the world right now. <laughs> I mean, Korea is probably the leading country on earth right now mm -hmm. in this area. And again, it's because you were first to have broadband, you were first to build virtual communities and understand how to live in virtual communities, and you understood what virtual currency is. Mm -hmm. It should, it's no surprise that Korea is continuing to lead the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so I'm always happy to be back here. <laughs> So you will be taking part in our Blockchain Open Forum Season 2 as well? Yeah. <laughs> I'm always looking for excuses to come back. Uh, uh, well, we'll be sure all. to send you an invitation. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, your, philan uh, your philosophy revolving around Kaizen and Ikigai was very inspiring. So as a last comment, would you care to share that thought to our audience? Yeah, Ikigai is what, often what we need. You know, and so we all have superpowers as Part of what I talked about and one of my superpowers is I'm a storyteller. Mm -hmm. I understand how to take complex ideas and distill them down into summaries where I can pass along a great deal of value or insight mm -hmm. quickly enough and simply enough that people comprehend it. Mm -hmm. And you do that by borrowing from other great things. Ikigai is I think one of the best ways of describing how to live a better life. And so the concept of Ikigai is there's four rings, but I think we only need three. Mm -hmm. One is figuring out, you know, what you love, what you're passionate about, what you're good at, mm -hmm. and what the world needs. If you find the intersection of what the world needs, what you're good at, and what you love doing, you've found your life's purpose. It, it, it doesn't even matter if you make money or not. You will eventually make money. <laughs> because and, you, and, and you're going to be happy, if nothing else. Money doesn't bring happiness. I presume that the last value is whether you get paid? Yeah. And again, I don't think you need, I mean, again, I don't think that that should even be a motivating factor. Because if you're doing what you love, and you're doing what you're good at, and you're doing what the world needs, you're going to be really, really happy. And you likely will make a lot of money. Because you're doing what you're good at. You're doing what you love. So you're going to be, whether you're paid or not, you're going to be enjoying every minute of it. And if it takes you five years to become successful at that thing, mm -hmm. you'll have enjoyed all five years leading up to it. Uh, and you're going to be making a positive impact. I mean, that's when you find your life's purpose. You wake up every morning jumping out of bed with joy. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to bed every night exhausted because you were working so hard on the things that you love that are making an impact in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, I think, what life's all about. So do you believe that you have reached the point of Ikigai currently? I feel I'm living my life's purpose, yeah. <laughs> so could you I, I wake up, I, I'm filled with joy all the time. <laughs> so could you expand on the concept of Kaizen as well? Yeah, Kaizen is another Japanese term, which is to do things well. You know, uh, far too often people go through life trying to find the path of least resistance. People go through life trying to do the job just good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, we're building a world of mediocrity. We're trying to do mediocre things. Mm -hmm. Why be mediocre when you can be great? Why not aspire to goodness mm -hmm. versus mediocreness? And what Kaizen is, is to approach situations and to do things as well as you can, and then to continually improve. It's do your best work. Mm -hmm. 
And when you wake up tomorrow, try to do it even better. And, and when you go through life always trying to be the best you can be, mm -hmm. always doing things as good as you can do, you're going to get really good. You will start doing great things, and it's that simple. It's your approach to life. If you try to do things just well enough, if you try to do things mediocre, what are you going to end up with? You're going to end up with a mediocre life. Yes. You're going to end up building mediocre things. Why? Why not do things good? Why not do things great? Why not be the best you can be? These are really simple philosophical things that if once you understand that, you know, when you go assemble that, when, you've, when you set the dining, you know, the dining room table, mm -hmm. you know, make it beautiful. Do things as well as you can. And when you take that approach to life, you may not do as many things, mm -hmm. but the things that you do do, you will do very well. Mm -hmm. so, and it will lead to ultimately the type of life that you want for yourself. And it's that little change in your approach to life that will make all the difference. So combining constant improvement and doing what you love, what you're good at, that's it's, your life it, motto? It's pretty simple. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I can't promise it'll work for everyone. It works for me. And I, 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 I like to think that it can work for everyone. <laughs> but, you know, that's up to each person. So, Brock, thank you so much for your time. Uh, would you care to give a last comment to our audience? Yeah, well, uh, uh, Korea's got soul. I, uh, you know, if you take the word soul and you take the E out of it, you get soul. If you take the U out of it, you get soul. You know, from the city <laughs> to our soul to the sun. It's good to be here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Brock Pierce, the chairman of Bitcoin Foundation. Thank you. Come tell me that.